Okay, welcome back, chemists. Uh, today we're going to look at some more features of stereoisomerism. And first, I just want to recap some vocabulary uh, that you have at the top of your notes. Uh, first off, stereoisomers that differ by rotation about a single bond. This is actually from our previous unit, things like ring flips and Newman projections. Those are conformational isomers. Technically, they're not even really isomers, are they? They're just different representations of the same compound. But we talk about how they exist differently in space. So I feel like it's worth just putting that there with the rest of these definitions. Uh, when we're talking about direction about a double bond, alkene isomers, we call those geometric isomers, things like cis versus trans alkenes. Uh, however, then we get to stereoisomers, which are non-identical mirror images. That was in yesterday's lesson. That's enantiomers, uh, the two different non-identical mirror images that are stereoisomers. We'll look at that again today and here on out. There's another term that I want to introduce that's new today. That's the one new thing which is when you have two stereoisomers, meaning they are connected in the same order, they are stereoisomers, only differing by how they exist in space, but they're actually not mirror images. So we have to give that a new name. These are called diastereomers, D-I-A, stereomers. So here's a picture that shows two molecules that are stereoisomers of each other, and they are mirror images. Those are what enantiomers look like. But what if I have two molecules that are stereoisomers of each other, such as these 2,3-dibromobutane derivatives, but they're not mirror images. Well, we have to give them a new name. Those are called diastereomers of each other. And diastereomers are more separable than enantiomers. Unlike enantiomers, different diastereomers actually have slightly different physical properties. You can sometimes separate them by things like distillation or chromatography because their properties will be slightly different. Uh, than, let's say, a pair of enantiomers whose physical properties are identical. So let's look at an example and try to classify different representations of a molecule based on these new terms that we have combining with some old ones. Here is a uh, chloromethylcyclohexane just drawn in a chair and a bunch of different representations of similar, sometimes the same molecules. Is this an enantiomer, a diastereomer, a conformational isomer, or is it the same as what's up above? Well, the first one is, is identical. That's just a redrawing of the same thing. However, when I get to B, I can tell, thinking about our past unit, we have an axial chlorine that's still axial, uh, an axial methyl that became equatorial, but they're on the same spot. This would be a diastereomer, original compound. Uh, in C, it looks like it might just be a ring flip uh, but be careful, you've actually inverted the stereochemistry of those two asymmetric carbons, and it might be easier to see this if you draw this in a non-chair representation. So I'll draw one flat hexagon representation with a methyl on one carbon and working my way around the ring, a chlorine on the other. That is the same as that original representation. If I do that with this representation down here, I notice that the methyl is now coming toward me. The chlorine is now coming is now going away from me. So we've inverted the stereochemistry at every single carbon. That's a red flag for an enantiomer. So this is a stereoisomer and it would be a mirror image of the original one. When I get to D, the methyl looks like it's in the same orientation, but the chlorine has inverted. So that's a diastereomer. That's our new definition. And the last one I think might be the trickiest one to see because it looks like they sort of changed the arrangement of where the chlorine and the methyl are relative to each other. So I'm going to once again draw this in a non-chair just to make it easier to see. There is a methyl up, so coming toward me. And here we have a chlorine on this position going away from me. Uh, that actually is just a conformational isomer. This is a ring flip the original compound. If I look at it in this representation, not in a chair, I can actually take the molecule and flip it on its side along this axis. Imagine rotating around that axis and you actually get this representation that we have originally. So this is not a stereoisomer, but it's a conformational isomer, specifically a ring flip, because it's drawn in this fashion. Remember, ring flips are only something you can talk about if you're looking at chair representations of molecules. You can't talk about ring flips when you're looking at non-chair representations like these hexagons. Okay, so let's practice this again by just looking at pairs of compounds. The whole point is we need to be able to communicate in this class about 
the relationship between molecules, when they're the same and when they're not the same. Um, and some things to look out for are if you have asymmetric carbons, if every single one of them has been inverted and it's otherwise drawn in the same fashion, you have an enantiomer. If some of them have changed and some of them have stayed the same, you have a diastereomer. And that's actually what's going on in the very first one. Here we have an inversion of stereochemistry at the alcohol carbon, but we've kept the stereochemistry at the methyl carbon. These are diastereomers. Right below it, B, uh, at first I notice that those are drawn to look like they're images of one another. So the question is, are they the same or are they not the same? These are actually the same. These are identical structures. There's a lot of symmetry in this molecule. And if that's difficult for you to see, take the one on the left and in your head, imagine what it would look like if you rotated it around that axis as if it was on like a shish kebab rotating over an open fire, then this chlorine in the lower right that's coming toward you would be in the upper right away from you, as it is in the upper representation. This chlorine in the upper left that's away from you would be in the lower left coming toward you, as it is in this other representation, and that's true for the other bromines as well. So these are the same compounds, just drawn differently, just rotated. Alternatively, uh, there, there's other rotations you could look at that would show you that this is the same thing. C. Uh, again, we have what looks like two mirror image compounds, so the question is, are they the same or are they not the same? And if you're having a hard time looking at it in a Newman projection, try converting it to a non-Newman projection. Find the carbon chain, there it is, all four carbons, and draw it from some perspective. Let's arbitrarily say we're, we're looking at it from this perspective. So what do I see when I look at it? From that perspective, I would see a zigzag that looks like that. And then off of the carbon, which is in the front of the Newman, that's gonna be the one that's on my right in this zigzag structure. And it looks like I have an H toward me and a chlorine away from me. So I would fill in the chlorine, the H is implied. Likewise, the carbon in the back of the Newman, the circle, is gonna be on my left-hand side. That's that carbon with a chlorine away from me and an H toward me. So I have a chlorine that looks like that. So that would be an accurate representation of that. Let's try to do the same thing for the other molecule and see if we can make a good comparison. Uh, here's your four carbon chain right there. I'm going to pick a place to look at this from this perspective. And I'll draw the, the zigzag that I would see. It would look like that. It looks like I have an H toward me and a chlorine away from me an H toward me and a chlorine away from me, meaning the chlorine is farther from this little stick figure that I imagine myself uh, looking at. So I have two chlorines on those middle two carbons away from me. Those are non-identical mirror images. This is a pair of enantiomers. I think that's one of the hardest examples we've seen so far. So go back and look at that to prove it to yourself. And if you can find another way of imagining what these molecules look like, you have to imagine what they look like from different perspectives can take a picture of an object from all different kinds of perspectives and it's still the same object. The challenge in organic chemistry is we're representing a three-dimensional thing on a two-dimensional piece of paper and we have to know what it looks like from the side, from the back, from the front, from the top, and from the bottom and recognize when we're just looking at a different representation of the same molecule. There's, there's tricks you can learn along the way but, but it's a skill that takes a lot to master so be patient with your skills as we embark on this. D, also drawn clearly as a pair of what look like mirror images. Are they the same or not? These are not the same. These are enantiomers of each other. You could imagine taking one of the molecules and rotating it around a vertical axis like that. I'll do that. I'll redraw the one on the left just to show what it would look like. And then those two substituents, those two asymmetric carbons, are now drawn with dashed lines instead of bold lines, and I can see, ah, I've drawn it in the same fashion as the other molecule, but every asymmetric carbon has been inverted. So that's a red flag for enantiomers. So there's the first batch. I would like you to hit pause and try those remaining five pairs of molecules. What's the best way to describe those pairs? And then come back and see how you did. Okay, for E, E is two molecules that are drawn in the same fashion, and I have two asymmetric carbons. One of them has been inverted, the other one has stayed the same. That's a red flag for diastereomers. 
For F, uh, F looks like these are both representations of sin 1, 2, dimethylcyclohexane, uh, but these are ring flips of each other. You cannot perfectly superimpose them. They're not actually stereoisomers in terms of being an antimers or diastereomers, but I can't take one of them and just make it interconvert and superimpose upon the other. I have to actually pucker it in one direction and do a, a ring flip to get it to turn into this. I could, I could tell by looking uh, at, let, let's say, this axial methyl. I go around the ring looking down at the ring uh, clockwise. Aha, here it's an equatorial methyl. I go around the ring clockwise, I get to axial. So axial followed by equatorial, as opposed to equatorial followed by axial. Those are ring flips of each other. G is easier. G is a pair of diastereomers. One asymmetric carbon has inverted. The other one has stayed the same. H is just identical. There's no asymmetric carbons in this molecule. They just took it and rotated it around that axis, and you get the same thing on the right. And lastly, I is a pair of geometric isomers. Geometric isomers technically count as a pair of diastereomers. They actually fall under that category, if you think about it because they are stereoisomers of each other, but they're not mirror images. So they count as diastereomers, but I prefer to classify them as geometric isomers because it really makes me remember that these are alkene isomers, uh, trans and cis, respectively. Okay, so that's uh, a lot of heavy practice of the different types of isomers that we see. There, there's more to come, and there's lots to practice on the back, but that introduces one new term, diastereomers, among all the other classifications that we have. Thanks for watching.